Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. In this video, I've been asked to prove two things, the triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality. And the challenge I've been given is to do these proofs without using triangles or geometry. Uh, typically, you may see these results proved by drawing up a triangle and um, using, say, geometrical proof. But I've been specifically asked to prove these two results without those techniques, so using more algebraic techniques. So the first result, the triangle inequality, says that the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B is greater than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B, and A and B are real numbers. Uh, the reverse triangle inequality says that the absolute value of A minus the absolute value of B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B. So what I'll do is I'll work through each of these using only algebraic techniques. If you find my explanation helpful, please give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. So what I'll do, starting with uh, this first item, the triangle inequality, um, a good place to start for this proof is to think about the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B all squared. Because what I'll eventually do is I'll get a inequality where both sides of the inequality are squared and then I'll take the square root of both sides and that will hopefully get us to this result here. So if we start by expanding this using just basic rules, we get the first one squared plus twice the product times the last one squared. So we'll get the absolute value of A squared plus twice the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B plus the absolute value of B squared. So hopefully that's um, a result you're familiar with. Now, what I can, the first thing I can now say about this is that this is equal to, and instead of the absolute value of a squared, I'm just going to write a squared plus 2 times the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b plus, and here I'll write b squared. And the reason I can do that is because in general, the absolute value of some number x squared is the same as that number x squared. And hopefully you can see that, um, for example, if I just took a positive number, say 2, the absolute value of 2 is just 2. 2 squared is equal to 2 squared, obviously. Um, if I took a negative number, say negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 just becomes positive 2 squared, which would be 4. Yet negative 2 squared would also become positive. So this absolute value taking the absolute value has the same effect as just squaring it anyway. So the absolute value of a number squared can just be written as that number squared. So that's all I've done here. Um, now what I can do is I can say that this will be greater than or equal to a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. And the reason I can say that is because the absolute value of some number x will always be greater than or equal to that number x. So if x is positive, then the absolute value of x is equal to x. That's, that would be this equal to part. If the value of x is negative, then the absolute value of x is greater than x because let's say, again, I stick with negative 2 as an example, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and 2 is greater than negative 2. So this, this uh, kind of truism is what allows us to bring an inequality into our working here. So these are the two, uh, I guess, axioms that we need to ultimately prove this triangle inequality. Because now from here, I can write this as hopefully you recognize a plus b squared because if I was to expand this, I'd get a squared plus twice the product plus b squared. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted an inequality where both sides were squared. 
so that I could then um, take the square root of both sides. But I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet because notice our triangle inequality needs both sides to have absolute values. Right now I've got absolute values here but not here. But what I can do, remembering this here, I can actually write the absolute value of a plus b squared, sorry, I can write a plus b squared as being the absolute value of a plus b squared because something squared is always equal to the absolute value of that something squared. So in this case, our something is a plus b. Now I've got everything I need because what I'll do is uh, I'll take the square roots of both sides. So I can now say, therefore, the square root of the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b squared will be greater than or equal to the square root of the absolute value of a plus b squared. And taking the square root of something squared just means they'll disappear. So you'll end up with the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b um, being greater than or equal to the absolute value of a plus b as required. That is the, the triangle inequality that we were asked to show. Panic boom! So now that we've got the triangle inequality, we can think about our reverse triangle inequality. So actually to, to this proof becomes quite simple because we can rely on what we've just shown with the triangle inequality to, to get where we need to get to. So for this proof, we can actually just start by thinking about the absolute value of a and writing it as the absolute value of, and because we want an a minus b, I'm just going to write a minus b. But I can't just subtract a b um, because that changes what I'm dealing with, so I'll have to add back a b so that I haven't changed anything. a minus b plus b is just a, which is what I started with. But in doing that, what I've done is I've got the absolute value of something, in this case a minus b, plus something else, b. And notice we just proved something um, in our triangle inequality. We, we proved an inequality in relation to that the absolute value of something plus something else will be less than or equal to the absolute value of those individual things. So I can say that this will be less than or equal to the absolute value of a minus b plus the absolute value of b. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. I've just applied what I've just proven, which is why I proved this one first, because I knew I'd, I'd be able to make use of it. Now all I have to do is bring this absolute value of b over and I'll get the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a minus b as required. That's the reverse triangle inequality. Panic boom! So there you have it. There's the two proofs. At no point have I drawn any triangles. I used any geometry uh, as was requested. So just with a bit of simple algebra, we've been able to prove both of these results, which really can come in handy when you're dealing with other inequality proofs. This triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality are both really good tools to have in your toolkit. So it's worth understanding these proofs. Um, whilst you'd probably, at the end of the day, commit these to memory, it never hurts to understand why they're true. And you never know, maybe one day you'll be in an exam where they actually ask you to prove it. So it's also handy to know this proof. Um, the key to it was for the triangle inequality, understanding these two axioms. And for the reverse triangle inequality, it was actually just knowing the triangle inequality and being able to apply it. So hopefully you found all that helpful. It's all made sense. And uh, tick boom.